I've uploaded to YouTube quite a few oscillator circuits, uh, especially for shortwave frequencies and a few, as far as I know, for longwave frequencies. And the question could be why an oscillator? Why do I publish so many oscillator circuits? Well, with an oscillator, like this experimental circuit, you can make coils, uh, set coils, into oscillation. Here you see that coil, uh, only an example. This is only a co oh, sorry, this is also a coil that works properly in this oscillator circuit. It's not sharp. This coil works properly. And here we see the oscillation from the coil. It's a coil on a quite uh, <coughs> low frequency, 438 kilohertz. So why do I publish so many oscillators? Well, they are very functional. You can use them for many purposes. Test coils on their quality. When a coil does not want to oscillate in an oscillator circuit, generally spoken the quality factor is low or it was made for another purpose. For instance a choke coil. It's very well possible that a choke coil does not oscillate here. It doesn't oscillate between 4.43 and 10.4 megahertz. Uh, sorry, 4.43 kilohertz, 10.4 megahertz. So test coils on their quality factor and test coils on their inductance. Here you see the formula. There are two uh, formulas. The formula from Thomson. The values in the formula from Thomson are quite high. So Henry and Farad are extremely high values. Normally in the radio technology we work with micro Henry and microfarad. So this is perhaps a better formula. Uh, it's expressed in the outcome is expressed in micro Henry and picofarad. That matches much better with the radio technology. And for all people that have um, uh, that can work good with mass and calculations. You can derive all the um, unknown factors in the formula when you know uh, a few factors that you measure. For instance, here we measure 439 kilohertz. We have this coil. And the capacitor here that bridges that coil is a fixed capacitor from uh, 56 picofarad. So we knew we know these two values. We know the capacitance value. We know the frequency. And there's also an unknown factor here. That's the parasitic capacitance that's here in this circuit. So that has to be taken in account. But you can get an indication about the inductance when you apply this formula this formula or that formula and you can correct it in such a way that you um, take out the parasitic capacitance. And uh, this oscillator by the way is an oscillator with a normal uh, transistor, not a field effect transistor, so a bipolar transistor and I have to say that the uh, parasitic capacitance here varies with the frequency. So do some measurements, make a table and um, decide for yourself how you can get a kind of correction factor when you measure coils. It's experimental, I know that. Take some time, take some study, but okay. 
So test coils, test coils on, on their quality, on their inductance. You can test coils with this oscillator between 1 microhenry and 175 microhenry. You can of course find the frequency band where uh, a coil works. In this case we have this coil. When you change the fixed value capacitor here into a variable capacitor and tune that capacitor turn the knob from that cap you will see that the frequency changes. And the good thing from this oscillator is by the way that there are two potentiometers and you can get all kinds of coils into oscillation. With fixed value um, resistors here in the base and in the emitter that's not possible. So find the frequency band where the coil works best. And there's also something to tell about the different frequency bands. There are quite a few frequency bands and in fact every band needs its special specific oscillator to work properly. So this is the division that I've made 0 to 20 kilohertz a resistor a capacitor oscillator works properly and on all higher frequency bands a, a coil and a cap works better. When we go higher than 18 megahertz it gets more specific and it's very uh, difficult to make a good oscillator that can be tuned for frequencies say between 18 megahertz and 30 megahertz. So a uh, peculiar specific uh, circuits have to be made when you want, want to make a shortwave radio that works between 18 megahertz and 30 megahertz. By the way uh, the radio amateurs uh, magazines can inform you more. There are a lot of properly working circuits with crystals etc etc. The front from the transistor that I've used, small transistors can easily burn out in this oscillator. I don't know why, but it happened. When I do some demonstration, this was the coil for quite a low frequency. We go now to test this coil. On the PVC tube, works properly normally. So without the camera, connect that uh, coil that I've showed to the crocodile clips and um, I have to tune in the oscillator again. I see now I've connected the coil here. I see no oscillation but when I tune this potentiometer here this potentiometer in the emitter lead, it's this potentiometer, this one. And you can see that this coil gives a very good oscillation on 3.9 uh, megahertz. It has a good quality factor, that's my opinion. And also, here you see the oscillation. Uh, the waveform looks a little bit like a sawtooth waveform, but it has to do with the fact that I've also connected here the counter to the same um, capacitor, output capacitor. So when I take away the counter, I want to do that now, you have this waveform, and when I tune the cap again, you can see this waveform, this looks more or less like a sine wave. When I finally tune the emitter potential, uh, sorry, the base potentiometer, it gets quite good. So this is a useful, usable waveform to do measurements. Not a pure sine wave. When you make a short wave receiver, you need a pure sine wave. But anyway, I think this waveform is also usable for a 
a shortwave receiver. So here we can see tr uh, three. Oh, sorry, it, it's goes up and down. I've disconnected the the counter. The frequency is uh, 3.97 megahertz. The uh, parallel capacitor here is known. It's uh, 56 picofarad. The, uh, the parasitic capacitor is unknown, parasitic capacitance, but uh, anyway, when you um, know how to calculate, are good in math or math mathematics, you will be able to find out the uh, inductance in microhenry from this coil. I've made a program in BASIC in the past, I cannot show it now, but that's also a usable way to calculate the inductance of unknown coils. Put that formula into a BASIC program and it's very easy.